Having followed along with New World, seeing the game change from what was originally a sandbox PvP focused game with very few theme park elements to what it is today, it has been a concern. One that I raised for quite a few months prior to the public ever really getting to play or discuss the game openly due to a non-disclosure agreement on the testers, it's been worrying because the game changed so drastically in not just the target audience, but how the game was going to actually play in such a short period of time. There were always going to be some massive issues as they scrambled to repurpose what they had from the previous version of the game to now. Theme park and sandbox games, while sharing the genre of MMORPG, are usually so vastly different in design that not a lot of one can go into the other. I mention this because we have now seen New World transition almost entirely into a theme park experience, and I'd say that since September 2020, roughly, they've started to really turn the corner on whether or not this game would be a bit of a wet flannel on launch. This video is basically just going to go over the newest addition to the game, actual real questing with voice acting to boot. So New World, if you played during the preview event in 2020, you know had one of the absolute worst questing experiences of a AAA theme park game you could probably ever experience. It was just honestly really bad, there was almost no redeeming qualities to it other than you were exploring this really nice world and New World's actual map is just stunning in my opinion. It's a really nice place to just walk around and immerse yourself in. But the quests were really, really poor as an experience. And that's not to say that I think theme park questing in general is super engaging, you know, like an amazing experience all the time. But New Worlds was just particularly egregious. I'm talking no voice acting, no actual story, just go from place to place, doing the exact same activities for dozens of hours, go here, interact with X item and kill Y enemy, it was absolutely miserable. I probably won't be able to find the quote because New World Studio has apparently privated most of their early 2020 developer blogs on their YouTube channel, but it was either there or in an interview that at one point I distinctly remember them saying, New World will not have story quests, the game will tell the story via the environment. I say all that to point out that there was massive reasons to be concerned just a year ago with how New World would be able to placate a player base that expects these features as a bare minimum, it's a baseline. Then we get to now and we see how much stuff has been added to the game, how the direction has so clearly changed over the last 12 months, and that's why I'm slightly more optimistic about the game's launch. Not because I'm a particular fan of theme park games, I like some of them, dislike others, and generally prefer sandbox for myself, but because this is what the game is now, we have to accept that and just hope it's the best version of itself possible. I think we're slowly getting there and this is a massive step in the right direction. So long story short, here we are at today's video talking about questing, so let's go through it. New World are designing their quests with four key pillars as their vision. Give players identity and purpose, they want us to understand our role within the world, giving us the ability to navigate and find which activities and playstyles would suit us. Immerse us within the game world of Eternum, the new main story quest will guide players through each region of the island and offer opportunities to explore the lore, uncovering ancient secrets, learning about the enemy groups, meeting powerful friends and enemies, as we uncover the truth beneath the surface of the mystical world. And provide consistent activities for players from start to finish, they want us to always have an active objective in the questing, highlight special moments and celebrate progression, take us to distinct areas and points of interest across the map, climactic moments, unlocking important items, stuff like that. So this is just a bunch of marketing buzzwords, it seems like. Basically, they've got a new main story questline, it's voice acted, it's actually going to be engaging in terms of telling us the lore of the world, and they want us to think it's the best thing since sliced bread, like they've came up with this amazing new concept and they have to push all these words in front of our face and the key pillars of what we're doing. Uh, I've seen a bunch of people go crazy about this I, either way, some people going crazy saying, oh, this is the best thing ever, uh, and it's just really bog standard just normal questing that you'd experience in any other theme park MMO as, as complete baseline. And then others getting upset that there's now a, a questing focus in the game that has quite clearly been going in that direction for well over a year now. Myself, I just feel like this is a step in the right direction, but nothing to really, you know, get, get too excited about. They've had very little time to implement an entire theme park storyline to the world, script every quest, get them all polished up, voice acted, and I'm going to guess there's not a ton of cool little side quest lines or anything in here as of yet. It'll probably be the bare minimum of what you would expect and need to get you to the end game. I don't think this is a bad thing because honestly the game doesn't really need to have that much of a focus on questing as some of the other games due to the open world nature of the game. 
And I'm going to guess they're going to add way more to this over time. I mean, we can look at New World from a year ago. Like I say, there was no story quests. There was no battlegrounds. There was no, um, you know, mostly theme park content. They'd repurposed the game, but they'd left out all the things that you would need to get that audience to play the game. So we're almost there now. But talking more specifically, what's changed about the quests in their own words? Quest variety and new objectives. Many zones have had their quests restructured for narrative flow. Additionally, in many instances, we've replaced generic looting objectives with new interactable items tailored to a specific quest. This should help increase quest variety along with creating unique experiences within both the main story quest line and many side quests found throughout Eternum. Improved starting experience. The starting experience in early main story quests through to the acquisition of the Azoth staff, a crucial weapon in the fight against corruption, has had many tweaks and alterations to improve progression flow. If you don't want the, what the Azov stat is, by the way, guys, that's basically what you need to do rifts later on in the game, which is something you do for, for experience and loot, if that's the way you want to go with it. So added voiceover and improved dialogue. All existing quests have had their dialogue updated to improve char NPC characterization and enhance quest directives. We also added English voiceover for the main story quest and starting beaches to help bring the many characters players encounter to life. Localized voiceover is in progress as well. It's always a treat to see a new face. Whether you are new to Eternum or simply from another settlement, you are welcome to First Light. Ah, it's almost a shame. I think the bears were about to accept me. Maybe. Well, what do you think of our new camp? Not much to look at yet, but as Plato says, the beginning is the most important part of the work. Though... This fort seems familiar somehow. Have I been here before? Introduce significant narrative quest lines with unique objectives in the new Ebon Scale Reach and Reekwater regions, where the players will need to complete late game story quests to vanquish powerful enemies such as the Sir Siren Queen and the Empress. Added quests for unique weapons and more. We've added new quests starting at level 40 that will guide players on a journey to craft and obtain rare armor sets and legendary weapons. And in future updates, they'll continue to build out the main story quest by adding narrative-driven climactic events through level 60. These will introduce new enemies, unique objectives to continue to improve quest variety, and new stories for the players to experience on their quest to learn the secrets of Eternum. So that's everything that they had to say in this blog. It was a short one. It didn't really give us much of anything. All in all, it's not really something I can see myself getting excited about as a feature. If you play questing in, in any Western MMO for the last 15 years, it's not going to be really any different. It, it doesn't really have to be, to be honest. It just needed to be there in the first place, and they finally got on over that hurdle. The best thing about questing in New World is always going to be about exploring the game world, which is absolutely stunning. That, as well as completely voice-acted main story, should provide an engaging enough experience to get people to the meat of the game. I'm just glad this is no longer an initial sticking point for, the, for New World, where you had to question, how will they get the audience that they intend to target into the game, when the game doesn't even have the basics in there yet. Now with questing, the new Trinity combat system, the new customization for making your own builds, the extra end game, the dungeons being added, the battlegrounds, it's definitely sh shaping up to be a game you would see launching in the not too distant future. There's still a ton of concerns such as factions not being fit for purpose, population imbalances between factions, territory being a big issue as well as travel. But for now, it's looking in a much better spot than ever before for the game they're trying to make, not the game you wanted them to make. So thanks as always for watching. Check my socials in the video description. I've got a Patreon if you want to support me further. NordVPN affiliate link if you want to use that, you get 70% off. Twitter, Twitch, I do stream on there every so often. And a Discord full of cool people to come hang out with, play games with. And I'll see you on the next one. Stay safe out there. We out. Peace.